Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is uh, Putri Nazrul Faizura binti Megat Kamaluddin. Uh, this is IGS Research Skills Seminar Module Number Two. So we'll be going over working with your supervisor. Um, in this particular slide, uh, it's divided into um, three sections, more or less. So the first one would be just on um, general advice. And then we proceed on about uh, the role of supervisor and what you can do to ensure the harmonious uh, situation throughout your study years. And um, the third part would be on um, on the steps or your action plan for the next two or three years. Okay, so we'll start about uh, the life as a graduate student. So um, in this slide, it says being a graduate student is like becoming all of the seven dwarfs. So in the beginning, you are dopey, bashful because you're new here. So you don't know people. You're not sure uh, on how to go about things, um, how to start your research. You haven't done research beforehand. And uh, if you are by nature shy, um, so it's a bit difficult to go in for you to ask questions, but you need to overcome that because being a graduate student, um, you are on your own. You do have uh, friends doing this exactly the same research as you. Therefore, you need to overcome being shy. You need to ask around. Um, you don't wait things to fall into your lap. Uh, so go around, ask people, ask the head of the uh, head of postgraduate studies, the clerks, and also your seniors in. Uh, in the room, if you have a room, an office. Okay, throughout the years, you start your research and then you, in the middle of it, you are usually sick, sneezy, you're tired, sleepy and irritable, you're grumpy. So because of pressure of trying to get data, trying to write and all other things, you manage your time, um, manage your supervisor. So you have all this uh, situation that you need to overcome. But inshallah, by the end of the day, they will call you doc because you've got your doctorate. If you've got a master's, you, you have finished your master's, you have finished your study, and you are going to be happy, inshallah. Okay, let's look into general advices. Most importantly, uh, for all of you, uh, you need to love the topic that you are going to work on these two, three years. Um, of course, in the beginning, you have no idea what you're doing, but uh, inshallah, there will be light at the end of the tunnel, uh, but you need to go forward step by step. Uh, there's no need to accelerate in the beginning because as of anything, learning curve at the beginning of uh, a topic or a subject, will be slow because there's a lot of things that you need to absorb. So don't get disheartened, don't get frustrated. The, the love to the particular subject or, or project that you're going to do will develop in time. Okay, so in order for this love to develop in time, um, you have to choose the topics wisely. Choose the topic that you are interested in. Uh, choose a topic that you think that's potential of uh, discovery potential that people have not many people have done it before so there are potential for you to do something novel something different um, and um, because you, you have to work with the particular research project day in day out for a few years therefore you, you need to be in love with the topic because you should by the end of your study, you should own it. You should know from A to Z, inside, outside of the particular uh, research topic. So choose uh, the topics wisely because you're going to live with it. All right, so this is Sister Mary Lorette says to be successful, the first thing to do is to fall in love with your work. So therefore, when you wake up in the morning, you will smile and think about your work. And sometimes, you know, your work will somehow subconsciously go into your dream. 
and you've got new things that that where you got new inspiration when you get up in the morning so do try your best to like what you're doing or love what you're doing okay so at the beginning of the research because this is new to you uh, what you must do is to look at other people's thesis. So there are ProQuest uh, websites that you can go. There are websites you can go. There are libraries that you can go. Um, you can get it online. Look at how they write their thesis, what you know, uh, their scope of work. So, uh, and, and, and by doing so that you know that, you know, more or less the areas that you want to explore in. And in addition to that, you have to familiarize with structure of in your ITM on how research is being done here, get to know the head of program, attend the uh, gatherings, uh, talk to your the seniors in the lab. So familiarize with structure, basically you need to know that when you are supposed to defend your proposal, what are the publication requirements, uh, when do you need to submit uh, your notice of submission. All these due dates, um, are, are special for each individual, each student. It's not the same for everyone because um, doing research is, is working on for you, for yourself. There's no mass deadline or whatever. So therefore, really need to know and notice all this. Okay. Uh, by by knowing, familiarizing with the structure and all that, so if you know when you're supposed to submit uh, your proposal and defend it, so that is knowing the expectation. And um, therefore, when you know in April 20th, for example, you have to defend your thesis or rather defend your proposal, um, so you can prepare beforehand because submissions of the proposal and all that is not the day before you defend your proposal, it should be a week. So therefore, you can plan properly. So by knowing expectation, what to expect when you're expecting, basically, it's just, you know, step by step, uh, being conscious of what you want to do. Um, it's not um, like a highway all the way. It will be, you have stops in between and you have to know when to stop and when to submit documents and things like that. Okay, um, don't forget, our library is quite extensive. There's also online um, library, PETA, PETA, which is for engineering, uh, whereby you can actually look online what is available, uh, databases that you can get online that your ITM subscribed. So get to know the library, get to know the resources, uh, so, because they will be your best friend for the next few years. And above of all else, uh, you need to get to know your supervisors um, because you are, will be working with them closely. Know what they expect and their style. Therefore, inshallah, they will be, uh, you have a harmonious relationship. Okay, when you say get to know your supervisors, you need to know how busy are they, um, how often you should meet, uh, how do they prefer your work to be sent, hard copy, soft copy, via email, WhatsApp, how long do they need to read and give feedback. So make sure all these uh, expectations are known in your first meeting if it's possible. Um, so you set a baseline. Um, therefore, in the future, it will be easier to manage your time and to manage your supervisor's time. Okay, so plan your work and don't forget to work your plan. Okay, in order to plan your work, it's best, uh, it's a good practice to have a gun chart. Of course, this gun chart will change throughout the years, but at least you have a basic gun chart that you work for work on. Uh, if you can, you have a simple table to give you reminders, to give you what to do next. You have a list of things every day that you want to jot it down. Um, so therefore, you won't forget. Uh, so when you see your supervisors and all that, make sure you print a book and write whatever you have agreed upon down so that you won't forget and you can plan your work properly. Okay. So there are examples. 
uh, here this is just a table so um, you have a schedule so make a weekly schedule or, or and then a very basic weekly schedule and maybe you have a very detailed uh, day schedule so um, so you would know how long you for example how long you need to prepare a sample and how long the analysis is going to be so let's say you have 10 samples so you can estimate how many weeks or how many days for you to complete the analysis for all the samples so don't go with the flow because remember where if you you are required to do sampling you are required to send your samples for testing those equipment are are used by many people therefore you need to book your time to use the particular equipment and you need to fit it all within your schedule because um, the supervisor will expect certain results at certain time so you do have to work either best is to work uh, with the availability of the equipment and work backwards so that you can make sure that everything will uh, finish on time okay uh, time managing time has always been a problem for graduate students uh, especially new ones because uh, there's no timetable there's no uh, saying that okay from 8 to 10 you have this class from 10 to 11 you have this class therefore you need to treat your PhD work or your research work like work uh, clock in and clock out um, 8 30 to 5 p.m uh, if it's required you can go during the weekends to the lab um, if it's a semester break it's not a semester break for you uh, you can take break at any time as long as you agree with your supervisor that you need a break um, but otherwise keep it as working hours like like the supervisor themselves okay because if you keep a fixed working hours every day uh, if you say okay I don't have any more labs to do for that particular day you finish at 3 but you want um, you, you want to go back at 5 so maybe you can do some sort of uh, writing and uh, reading the journals by having this good habit you implement from the beginning of your research work uh, inshallah you will finish on time that is having the GOT graduate on time One more advice that, uh, that I would like to give or most supervisors would like to give is don't procrastinate. Don't wait. Don't make excuses uh, and, or putting things off or complain and complain about things, right? whining about it um, or worrying whether you can do it or not. Yeah. So when things doesn't go uh, the way that you plan, um, don't just give up or just complain. Uh, think of your uh, what what you can do, what alternatives. Uh, read up, so there will be alternatives, um, different approach that you might do. So don't waste time just being sad and de disappointed and frustrated. Okay, you can you you should be disappointed if things doesn't go out your way, but uh, get up and do something about it. So be positive. So just do it. The other advice is document all sources diligently. Record, record, sorry, record all codes and references. Uh, you can devise a system that works for you. You can use um, EndNote, Mendeley to um, compile all your references um, make sure that some people prefer to write in a notebook some people will type in into an excel so but whatever it is document everything um, if you want to for example if your way of documenting uh, your journals according to topic you put it according to a particular topic of your research otherwise you can document it according to the journal or document, document it according to the writer of the journals. So whatever works for you, as long as you do document your, all your sources diligently. Okay, saving your work. I think this is, this is uh, um, now this is very easy. Uh, you can save your work on various um, cloud 
um, drives, right? Uh, you have OneDrive, you have Dropbox, you have Google Drive, and so many others. And then on top of that, you can also save your documents in your uh, laptop or your PC. You can also save your document in the thumb drive. You can save your document into a external hard drive. So whatever it is, make sure you save everything everywhere. Okay, nothing is worse than a virus attack as mentioned here, or nothing is worse than suddenly your laptop is getting caught stolen. So starting all over again is very, very time consuming and tedious. So do save, save everywhere and do multiple saves. Okay. Right, I mentioned this as well. Just now save your files in the memorable ways, your, your, your style, whatever it is that works for you. So that if you want to remember certain things, you know exactly where uh, you put it. Okay. The next uh, advice is when you do research, uh, you need to do a lot of reading. You need to do your literature review. By doing your literature review, you will be able to identify the gap in the research that you are doing. So that's the gap that you want to fill in by doing your research. So make sure that you are clear of this, okay? Right, there's tendency for research students to work in silo. So, um, you know, to be in a silo or not to be in a silo, meaning you want to work alone or you want to work with other people who have similar projects with you, not exactly the same. But um, my advice is do not work in silo. Uh, you need to work with other people, not necessarily have to be in the same lab as you. It can be in a different university doing similar work. So um, contact them, talk to them and uh, uh, join discussion list on, online. Um, there's a lot of uh, online uh, research discussion that is available. I cannot remember the name of the research discussion uh, website, but there are there. So you can, if you have any questions, you can post it there and somebody will eventually answer your questions. Okay. And uh, you can actually sit down and talk uh, together by reading uh, journals um, together and um, might, your research might not be the same, but there's some similarity in, in let's say, analyzing uh, results coming out from FTIR, for example. So, uh, if you do, if you work with someone who has actually done some analysis using FTIR, so get to know them and talk to them, and it might give you uh, some ideas on how to analyze your results. Okay, when to start. Writing this is the next advice for, uh, for me is um, from day one. Okay, start writing from the beginning. Make it a practice to write often enough. Um, uh, don't postpone the writing. So you start writing and uh, compiling, write and compiling um, so that the, um, the idea to write at the end of your research will not be so overwhelming and you get writers until the point of you get writer's block. So start writing from day one. Okay. So this is what it says. Read and then write as soon as possible. Write after every, every article that you read. Uh, some people write a summary of the articles that they read in um, in Excel, right? So it's a good practice. If you are stuck, look at the codes and see how they can be expanded or how they relate to your purpose or also data. So sometimes you do get you 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 do get mind block uh, or because there's so many information uh, that you read, so you just don't know how to connect it. So take a step back. And um, just go one by one slowly and see how you can expand it. Okay. Um, if you just write one sentence or to summarize a, a method, for example, that is already an, uh, a progress for that day. 
slowly that particular progress can get larger and larger. Okay, this is Mary Angelou says the idea is to write it is so that people hear it and it slides to the brain and goes straight to the heart. So when you write something, uh, especially for academic writing, uh, you don't have to have you know flowery prose and things like that. It can be very simple, straightforward sentences. Uh, as long as people can understand and 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 you know and basically feel what you are going through at that particular time, that research and all that. Okay, next advice is balance is important. What you mean by balance is um, uh, balance with your supervisor, with uh, the work that you carry out, with also home at home, so make sure all these are balanced. For this particular uh, module, we're going to talk about supervisors. So a good relationship with the supervisor will make it an easier route to the finish line. So compliment people, magnify their strengths and not their weaknesses. So basically, supervisors are also human beings. Uh, you need to figure out a way on how to work together with them. Okay, so because good supervisors can take you to incredible heights, they help you learn to fly, providing the wind beneath you and providing a net for you when you fall. So communication is the key. So um, have a very good relationship with them. Um, Inshallah, um, you can finish your work. Okay, so goal, uh, we are going into the next uh, section or next segment of this lecture. Uh, which is talking about working with the supervisor. So the goal of uh, this uh, the session or this segment is, you, we, I will tell you about the role of the supervisors and also the role of the student. Uh, identify the expectations of the students and supervisor supervisors, which is very very important. So the base uh, expectations must be there, and then you should be able to develop your action plan. So this is the outline, uh, role of supervisor, choosing supervisor, uh, the expectation, understanding them, manipulating your supervisor and the conflict. Okay, why are we here? So why are you here uh, in, in this particular lecture? So you can stop your lecture and think why are you doing your research? Uh, otherwise you can proceed. And so I'm going to proceed. So why pursue postgraduate degrees? For some people, they want to further their career. Uh, so some people want to change direction of their career, uh, or you want to pursue passion for a subject, you know, enter the profession that needs a specific qualification, or just for personal satisfaction. So each of you would have different um, motivation on pursuing postgraduate degree. Okay, in overall, uh, for PhD and Masters, research training to develop competent, competent research basically covers four aspects. A knowledge and intellectual abilities, which is domain A, um, and uh, personal effectiveness, which is domain B, research governance and organization, domain C, and uh, D is engagement and influence impact. So throughout two to three years, uh, all this competency uh, will be expanded, um, but all it all depends on number one your drive to do the uh, to do uh, postgraduate studies. If you're really interested, you should be able to complete all four competency. Uh, if you have the drive to do it, you, uh, then you can. If you have the degree to complete, then you can have this competency with the help of your supervisor, of course. Because this is the average time to finish, uh, finish a PhD in UK, in Australia, and so on and so forth. So I was just proceed here. Um, for UITM, in average uh, time,
time for PhD is about five years. Uh, for uh, masters is about three years. Okay, so for all of you, the common things are you have been accepted to your ITM, uh, you have some ideas of what you're going to do, and you have your supervisor. So how does doing a research degree differ from coursework? Is number one, you are doing independent research. As I mentioned, self-motivation is, is, is important in doing research. Uh, you have to be creative. Uh, if there's a problem, uh, to overcome the problem, you have to think outside the box to be creative. Managing time is very, very important. Uh, publication is the requirement that you need to fulfill and to achieve all this publication and all that you need to be working with a supervisor. Okay, so I will cover this. So factors of affecting candidate success, these are some of the factors. So the highest percentage is uh, supervisor's commitment. Okay. And problems faced by PhD candidate, most of them say they have problems uh, with the supervisor. So supervisors, you need you at least one main supervisor, uh, or you can have uh, co-supervisors three for PhD at least, or three co-supervisors. So having these supervisors, uh, if you have main supervisor, of course supervisor with different different. Uh, um, research areas and expertise, they can be beneficial. Uh, they can also be frustrating, especially when your, the expectations are clashes. Um, they can be invisible. Uh, sometimes supervisor is very, very busy, um, but they, they, they are there, but they can be seem invisible. You must remember they are also human. Okay, role of uh, supervisor. The, the role of supervisor is to direct or oversee the performance of the operation. Uh, and for, for research, is the person who is responsible to guide. Yeah, the keyword is guide the research student. Or other terms I use is to tutor or a thesis advisor. Okay, there are some definition. Uh, supervision. Um, you look on the left, supervision is the academic context, is a process to facilitate. Okay, supervision is to facilitate the student to become an independent professional researcher and scholar in the field. Um, must be able to adapt to various research ar arenas, whether in university or in industry. Okay, so supervision means to facilitate so that in the end you become an independent professional researcher. So look on the right. So the role of supervisors to provide high quality research and learning environment for graduate students. So this is done by advising, mentoring uh, the graduate student so that you can do scholarly activities and have the intellectual enhancement. Uh, and then you can have a professional career coming out after you graduate. So a supervisor holds so many roles, as you can see here. Director, facilitator, advisor, teacher, guide, critic, freedom giver, supporter, friend, manager, and examiner. So it can be all of this. So let's see how in the coming on slides, you can see how the supervisor can play a role for all, all these roles. So role of supervisor uh, in the beginning is to provide uh, idea or provide guide to have, so that you have a clear sense of the research question and uh, to help student engage with the field of scholarship to understand scholarly context of the work so that's what the supervisor do and then uh, after that the supervisor will become an editor uh, read your reports read the thesis uh, scholar 
to facilitate candidates' expression of originality and ensure the work makes contributions. So we have to read your thesis, read your report, make sure that you are on track and have enough um, data, enough novelty in your research. And uh, we can, supervisor can also be a broker to introduce the candidate to other people, to the community. Um, we will encourage you to present your papers in professional uh, settings. So that is the role of the supervisor. So make sure you don't run away when we ask them to uh, you to present in a conference. Don't say, oh, I don't want that is part of your training. So, you know, go ahead, do it. Okay, uh, if you have a choice, you can choose your supervisor. So basically, everyone has the choice. You can choose your supervisor. So this is important. So identify the professors working in the area of your interest. You go talk to them and see whether you know you have you can actually work with them. Um, study their current projects. Are they in the area of your current interest? And uh, are the projects uh, is appealing to you? Um, you can look at the publication record. Um, you can choose professors that are currently active in their research. So you can uh, do, use uh, Google and Science Direct and find out whether the publications are uh, the prof current pro that professor research is active. Okay, uh, there are some professors who are not very active uh, in research, um, maybe because they have switched to administrative duties, but they are experienced professors, you might want to consider them as well. Um, you can talk to their recent graduates, right? Um, get their feedback. Okay. Um, and then whatever it is, uh, everything information that you have received um, is your attitude matters. Um, so if the supervisor is holding an administrative post and she's super super busy but he she has or he has enough experience to guide you uh, you would be more independent so therefore your attitude makes the, the difference okay so I mentioned this as well talk to the current students go to the lab talk to the current students and um, don't um, Take everything with a pinch of salt um, because you remember different people have totally different perception. This is also something that you might want to think you want to go for young or senior faculty member. So young faculty member they are very active and motivated so they have less administrative duty and they are closer to your age group so you it can be like a buddy buddy system uh, with the, the your supervisor. For senior faculty, they are more experienced, they are more connected uh, with other universities, with other researchers, researchers from other universities. They have grants as well and they have more alumni. So maybe uh, the graduated student, they can connect it to them. So um, after you graduate, that's where you, know, you can find jobs and things like that. Okay, so what are the expectations? So this is an activity again, so five minutes. So um, you can take a break or you can proceed on. Okay, expectation of the students through supervisor. So these are several expectations of students of the supervisor. They expect someone who's friendly, open and supportive that read, uh, work well in advance. Uh, they are available in area, a research area. They are interested in the research area. Uh, they can provide critical, uh, they can critically analyze your result and constructively uh, give feedback, yeah? constructive feedback. Um, have good knowledge of research area, uh, meetings of uh, exchange of ideas instead of like a dictator style, right? So you can give your ideas and you expect the, the supervisor to consider your idea, okay? Uh, to sufficient interest in the research to guide the students, okay? Uh, can be as a role model as well. And uh, will provide academic role development. So if you are uh, wanting to be a lecturer, maybe you can um, help your supervisor and 
uh, to for tutorials, uh, to conduct lecture, exercise. So it will be an experience game um, by you. For supervisors, we expect students to be independent um, because you are will be in your twenties, thirties. Should should be independent. Uh, you must produce drafts. We cannot read, uh, supervisors cannot read your mind, so it has to be a written uh, document, so it has to be a produced drafts. Have regular meetings once a week, right? Don't go missing for a long time, come and see, even though the supervisor might not remember to call you for meeting, so it's your discipline uh, to actually remind your supervisor, say, I, I need to see you, so set a meeting, set an appointment. Honestly, in reporting your progress, sometimes you don't progress very well for that particular week or month. Uh, be honest with your supervisor. Um, if you have personal problems, do tell as much as you can or as little as you can, but do tell. Don't go missing and uh, keep quiet. Okay. Follow the advice that is given. This is important. Uh, students excited about their work to surprise them and fun to work with. So students who are very proactive, very independent, who think in advance of the problems or, or, or rather if the student faced the problems, give suggestions on how to overcome the problems, very enthusiastic, then the supervisor will become enthusiastic. Okay, understanding your supervisors, understand their goals, their skills, their hates, their inadequacies. So, um, this is, you know, um, person to person um, um, approach, right? So, um, you need to understand what are their expectations, how they can help you with their skills and what they don't like, right? Uh, and uh, if there's a gap in the skills that they have, don't push it. Uh, you can ask them whether, uh, whether they can suggest anyone else that it can help you. Okay, supervision is not a well paid job uh, because sometimes we on, not only supervise this, this, so in this university, so they are become school supervisors from other university. So what is the motivating factors? Um, the motivating factors is giving back to the system because uh, the supervisors have done PhDs and masters, so we would like to help in developing uh, human resources in terms of producing more PhDs and more masters. Okay, some uh, some supervisors want to create scientific legacy to leave their name behind, and uh, if their research area is they started a research area which is new, they would like to multiply their effort. Um, okay, supervisors also would like to offer their different skills uh, during the life cycle of the PhD. So in the beginning, they help you to um, to make sure that your problem statement is good, uh, to identify, to help you to identify the gaps, and after that, they will read whatever documents that you produce, papers, and all that. So they would help to uh, refine your work. Right, so these are some of the skills that are developed during their postgraduate study. Okay, so sometimes they can also foresee a problem, so they will tell you beforehand. Okay, because they already have done it before. Okay, so uh, I think I mentioned as well in the middle, they will watch for bigger pictures. Sometimes you are narrowed down to inside your research work. So you don't see the bigger picture, so the supervisor will help you to look at the bigger picture and nudge you in the good direction. And uh, as I said, they have done it before, so the supervisor will be able to identify the come up, so common pitfalls and make sure that your work will finish on time by keeping eye on the clock. At the end, if the, the supervisor would know that your data is sufficient, will tell you to stop and uh, we'll have an idea on how the thesis would look like and uh, we'll ask you questions because they can anticipate the problem areas for your viva so can get you ready for your viva 
Supervisors in general hate students who quit halfway because it's a wasted effort all around and especially if they pay you using the grant so the money is wasted so that's what the supervisor hates so once you start doing something finish it and the other thing that most supervisor hates is students who finish late so they will drag students who likes to drag and drag their writing so uh, please don't do that and remember supervisors are human as uh, most supervisors cannot read your mind uh, cannot uh, manage uh, your time for you and also there are so many things to remember so we cannot manage to remember every single thing if you have three or four students doing a uh, PhD and master sometimes it's difficult to keep track on who's doing what okay supervision styles in the in general there are three styles the big daddy the mentoring colleague and the senior colleague so the big daddy is for uh, students who have the skills to do research but cannot work uh, independently yet okay the second one is uh, the students still need some moderate guide and uh, the third one uh, the student recognize the need for guidance supervision but you know fairly general level so let's go into detail uh, supervision style, strong master, apprentice style. Uh, supervisor is the master, student works as apprentice, apprentice on problems selected by the uh, master. So basically for this, uh, the master will help to do a lot of things. It will provide very strong guidance. Um, but the advantage is, the disadvantage is um, the student uh, may not be able to deal, have the develop the ability to formulate the research because everything is set by the master, the supervisor. So this particular condition best fit uh, relatively immature, inexperienced students who need strong directions. And, and it fits also if the research is well defined. The next, the next one is collegial or master apprentice. So this one is um, fit within the general domains of expertise where the supervisor have an idea on what to do but it doesn't have a specific uh, uh, methodology perhaps you're still trying you know various options and all that um, therefore put more responsibility on the student to work on the particular research they will advise within what they know at the particular time okay so works well when both student and uh, supervisor are interested in the problem and that is new for both of them so they learn together but the supervisor has the advantage because they have sufficient sufficient expertise to provide good guidance next one is collegial development style uh, this one is totally new uh, area okay uh, not in the domains of supervisors current or past research. It's extended to areas in which the supervisor has an interested interest in and willing to invest time in it. So it's a joint learning experience. Um, it, however, in this particular style, the student must be uh, fairly independent. Okay. Um, And then you have the guidance and suggestion style. This is general advising over a range of problem domains. So some supervisors have good skills at problem identification and problem formulation. So this type of supervisor works best with students who are willing and able to take up the initiative, take responsibility of the learning and research domain. Uh, therefore, this is very good for mature students who have done research beforehand. So they, they, they are very proactive. So it's not very good for immature students. So this one can be whereby the supervisors say, okay, give an idea. Why don't you go and find out? Why don't you do this? And they expect the student to come back and prepare uh, and, and, and report in what they have found. 
supervising style, passive hands-on. So this uh, laissez-faire style uh, is just control uh, quality control reader. Um, student will do everything, take the initiative to define, decide, research method, develop research plan, and so forth. Um, responsibility is almost entirely with the students. Supervisors just give uh, uh, initiative with some uh, suggestions. Um, so therefore, again, this is more suitable for um, mature students who have done research beforehand. Okay, dealing with conflict. Uh, so this one is be aware of um, conflict uh, with your supervisor. So you must be aware that the supervisor is not doing just supervising you. So they have, have other responsibilities such as undergraduate teaching, uh, other PhD MSc to uh, supervises, research assistants, publication, administration, and all other professional roles that they have to juggle. So to deal with the conflict, so that you know we have a smooth sailing journey or rather you know not exactly smooth sailing but at least it's pleasant journey um, you need to understand the potential problems so the problems uh, for students is uh, there will be conflict when but the student feels that they have lack of guidance and the supervisor is always unavailable and the supervisors, when they submit something, uh, a document or a report, they, uh, the supervisors are not critical with what they have done. They feel um, they need more. Yeah, the students need more feedback. Or comes back, when you submit a document, comes back with a lot of red marks in the paper. It can be quite, quite frustrating. Or the supervisors uh, lack knowledge in the subject area, so they can. That's why they cannot give proper uh, feedback. For supervisors, uh, the problem would be if the students are overly dependent. If the students are not honest. The student cannot be contactable. Just not enthusiastic to do the research. Just when we ask to, the supervisor asks to do A, they do B. Don't follow advice and oversensitive to criticism, so that would be very difficult and show lack of commitment. So the basis of the problem would be lack of communication. Okay, been missing for a while. Mismatch expectations. So that's why I say it's very important to make sure that expectations uh, is set at the beginning of the relationship. Personality clash, those provisors is so outgoing. Um, outspoken and the students are very quiet like a mouse so that's personality clash and also competing pressures okay pressure doing things can also lead to uh, conflict dealing with the conflict first and foremost you must communicate okay communicate often uh, if you don't have results still go and communicate uh, maybe you just talk things through and, and your problems will be unraveled and uh, a solution can be uh, seen. Yeah? Keep your expectations uh, realistic. Right? If you give a paper uh, and you need to, let's say you need to submit uh, to a conference uh, on a certain date and you give your supervisor the day before the due date, and expect feedback so that's not very realistic so make sure that your expectation is realistic make sure you all be organized okay uh, your documents your papers so when the supervisor asks for certain do certain documents you are able to find it be open be flexible honest be professional and please if there's any problems a uh, personal or equipment problems don't keep it to yourself inform your supervisor Next is compromise, okay, uh, discuss um, properly uh, and compromise, okay, discuss expectation at the beginning, I can mention this many times, give sufficient notice, draw up an agenda for your meetings so that when you come to see your supervisor, you don't waste time trying to remember what you want to say to them, so make sure that you write down what is needed to talk about during the meeting. Uh, you can record yeah, the outcome of the meeting. I said we use a lot to jot it down so that sometimes when the supervisor says A and when they 
next meeting the supervisor asks about B, you say no, you ask me to do A, so there's a proof there when you write it down. Okay, and then make sure that you arrange the meeting ahead of time. So if the problem persists, do speak to your second supervisor if you have, or the head of program, or your team. If else fails, you can change, but there are procedures to follow. Talk to the head of program or head of postgraduate studies. Managing your supervisor. Uh, why should you manage your supervisor? because they can be busy so uh, manage as in make sure you make appointment ahead of time and things like that give them um, reminder politely okay uh, because we appreciate all those uh, reminders polite, polite reminders and all that so, because sometimes you can uh, the supervisor get overwhelmed with work and tends to forget have weekly meeting which is very important Okay, uh, especially at the beginning, set a quick pace for your uh, project. Uh, take initiative because the project is yours, so you own it. So make sure you take initiative to complete your project. Don't wait for the supervisors to tell you what to do. Okay, learn how to communicate. Uh, even if you disagree, don't make it personal. Uh, disagree politely. Um, try to meet deadlines. Deadlines are set by supervisors. Are because they consider their own deadlines, so make sure that you meet the deadline set by the supervisor, okay? So that you can build the trust of uh, for your of your supervisor in your capabilities, and try to understand their character. So they will help things uh, getting things done. So if your your supervisor says, "I just want hard copies," provide them with a the hard copy, even though you know it's not environmentally friendly, but if it helps them to uh, review your work, do it, okay? Uh, make sure when you submit your work to your supervisor, because they have so many students, your name and everything is there. Okay, complete. Don't give uh, rubbish in, right? Uh, be positive. Smile. Okay, your supervisor most likely want to help you and you also be will feel better and work hard. If you work hard, right, you be polite, say, um, doctor, I need this by so on so forth because you have this. So be polite. So then the supervisor says, okay, 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 we will do it for you. So, right? Right. 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 That is part of doing research. Okay. Right. So writing is the driver for good supervision, writing, constitutive of thinking. So whatever you think, whatever you, you analyze, you need to write it down um, and then the provide it to your supervisor so that it's, it's, it's easier for the supervisor to have something to read and to understand what you're trying to do. Okay, so they can com comment uh, critically uh, in the best way. Okay. Uh, it can be your, be the ambassador for your supervisor. That's why when we send for conferences and all that, so you can say that my supervisor is so and so, uh, so you can be the ambassador. So be polite, be good uh, in, in creating new uh, relationship with other people and make yourself invaluable. So, you know, um, help your supervisor. I have students who wants me to read their thesis, his thesis. He helps me to uh, read or help with the tutorial of my class okay, so that I can have time to actually read his thesis. Volunteer. Don't forget to recharge your battery. So doing research is a long journey. It's not a 100 meter sprint. Uh, so it takes time. Uh, eight to five is your research work. And after that, you can go out and you know uh, pursue your hobby, uh, work out, have enough sleep, have uh, relationships, okay? Um, uh, solar and things like that. Okay, all things in moderation. You need to combine work with fun. Okay, try to do something uh, outside your lab. Take a break. Uh, reward, reward yourself after a big project deadline. Okay, uh, go and eat a very good meal. Um, go back and see your mother. Uh, everyday activities from eight to five doesn't mean that it's you know packed from eight to five. Uh, do have a break, small, short coffee break with your friend. Have a good meal. Uh, and then something during the weekend, go to see movies, go to the gym, play sports, which is also very important. Get involved. Uh, don't just 
um, apa tu, go back to your room after 5 o'clock and just sleep. So make sure that you have physical activities involved as well. Okay, don't forget to use IT technology. I mentioned about Dropbox, Google Drive. Use Mendeley to share reference paper. You can use EndNote and there's plenty of other uh, app that you can use uh, to help smoothen your journey. So the conclusion is, working with your supervisor, you need the skills to listen, to negotiate. You must have good interpersonal skills, be creative, and remember your supervisor have life too. Okay, your master's and PhD could be the best time of your life. Uh, make sure you manage your time. Okay, I think you've repeated it many times. Manage your time properly. Um, with good supervision, inshallah, you will have you will succeed in your work and don't forget to have fun. So last segment is on your action plan. So these are the summary of everything that I mentioned just now. Communication is the key. Write down the agenda, schedule the next meeting. Do jot down whatever you discuss during the meeting with your supervisor. Write more often in advance of meetings, meaning you, you have already items that you want to discuss with your supervisor. Uh, make note of the outcome. Uh, draw up organized agendas for the meetings. Expect a bit less. Um, be less in intimidated because you do have to balance out your work and also your uh, personal life. So expect a bit less. Okay, be less intimidated to approach the good uh, goddess with your, my own thoughts and critical ideas. Basically, when you see your supervisors, just just say what you have in mind. Okay, by doing all this, you can improve your communication skills, um, and and be independent and um, and so on and so forth. So these are your action plan. Okay, make sure you see your supervisor regularly. Okay, thank you for your attention. Um, hopefully this talk will benefit you.